Now, the Johnsons were expecting a baby. The ultrasound scans revealed that it was a boy. A family meeting was called to choose a name for the child. On that said day, Mr. Labi, their neighbor, showed up. Now, everyone was surprised. How did he know? He was excused from the meeting because he wasn't a member of the family. Huh, serves him right, I guess. Now, just like the Johnsons, a group of pure and applied chemists all over the world gathered together to form the name IUPAC, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Now, and they gave a proper name and naming system to all the various elements in chemistry. Now, here's how they prescribed the naming of a compound with two elements. Do you want to see it? Let's go ahead. If the first is a cation, and the second is an anion. You start with the first, then you proceed to the second element. However, ensure to end with an IDE. Now, in particular, NaCl is a combination of sodium and chlorine. It would become sodium chloride. Wow, that's simple, right? So what have we learned? We have learned that IUPAC, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry Nomenclature, is the acceptable system of naming chemical compounds. Now, the naming is determined by the constituent elements in the compound and the oxidation number if necessary. Also, in naming binary compounds, that is compounds with only two elements, electropositive elements, that is cations, are usually named first while the electronegative elements, that is anions, come last with a modification of the name ends with IDE. Now, when there is an oxidation number, it is indicated with a Roman numeral in a bracket. For example, we have MgO, that is magnesium oxide, H2S, hydrogen sulfide, NH4Cl, ammonium chloride, NaH, sodium hydride, FeCl, ion 2 oxide. However, in cases where the two elements involved are non-metals, the above rule is not followed. For example, H2O, water, NH3, ammonia, and PH3, phosphine. Insightful, right? Now, I hope you enjoyed that class. See you in next class. Bye for now.